Good afternoon, and welcome to Saints Peter and Paul, and we want to, in a very special way, welcome any visitors this weekend, and please know you're always welcome to pray with us. Now, this weekend, we do celebrate the 28th Sunday in Ordinary Time, so now let us stand together and join in singing our gathering hymn, number 674, Healing River of the Spirit, number 674. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, and with your spirit. As we prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries, <coughs> let us call to mind God's mercy and love. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the <coughs> Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen.
Let us pray. O Lord, may your grace at all times go before us and follow after, and make us always determined to carry out good works. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the second book of Kings. Naaman went down and plunged into the Jordan seven times at the word of Elisa, the man of God. His flesh became again like the flesh of a little child, and he was clean of his leprosy. <clears throat> Naaman returned with his whole retinue to the man of God. On his arrival, he stood before Elisa and said, Now I know that there is no God in all the earth except in Israel. Please accept a gift from your servant. <coughs> Elisa replied, As the Lord lives, whom I serve, I will not take it. And despite Naaman's urging, he still refused. Naaman said, If you will not accept, please let me, your servant, have two mule loads of earth, for I will no longer offer holocaust or sacrifice to any other god except to the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God.
A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Beloved, remember Jesus Christ raised from the dead, a descendant of David. Such is my gospel for which I am suffering, even to the point of chains like a criminal. But the word of God is not chained. Therefore, I bear with everything for the sake of those who are chosen so that they too may obtain the salvation that is in Christ Jesus, together with eternal glory. This saving is trustworthy. If we had died with him, we shall also live with him. If we persevere, we shall also reign with him. But if we deny him, he will deny us. If we are unfaithful, he remains faithful, or he cannot deny himself. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, o Lord. As Jesus can 
continued his journey to Jerusalem, he traveled through Samaria and Galilee. As he was entering a village, ten lepers met him. They stood at a distance, distance from him, and raised their voices, saying, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. And when he saw them, he said, Go show yourselves to the priests. And as they were going, they were healed. And one of them, realizing he had been healed, returned to glorify God in a loud voice. And he fell at the feet of Jesus and thanked him. He was a Samaritan. Jesus said in reply, Ten were cleansed, were they not? Where are the other nine? Has none but this foreigner returned to give thanks to God? And he said to him, Stand up and go. Your faith has saved you. The Gospel of the Lord. The Lord has revealed to the nations his saving power. We just heard that a few minutes ago. A responsorial sound. But those words come out in power again in our readings for today. As in the first reading from 2 Kings, we hear how God's saving power healed Naaman, a pagan Gentile Syrian, and made him a believer in the God of Israel. In the gospel passage, we hear Jesus tell the healed leper that his faith has saved him. He was a Samaritan, a foreigner, who was despised by the Jewish people as heretics. The saving power revealed in these readings show it to be available to all, not just the Jewish people. Now, did that saving power of Jesus disappear and was lost after Jesus ascended into heaven? Well, of course not. If that were true, then Jesus would be a liar because he said he would be with us until the end of time. Rather, Jesus' ascension raised him to a position where he could oversee the operations on earth, those prompted and fulfilled by the Holy Spirit. He formed his church and endowed it with the Holy Spirit, who was no less at work then as now. Just as much as on the day of Pentecost, when the church was formed on earth. But I find it a very comforting way to think of the church as a hospital for sinners, where we can go to find healing. Now, all of the sacraments are an encounter with Jesus and have healing power flowing through them. We even call the Holy Eucharist the source and summit of our spiritual life. However, since this weekend, we are observing our annual anniversary mass for all parish couples married 25 years or more. I'd like to focus this day on the sacrament of matrimony. Now, you may have heard or read that the number of couples coming to the church for marriage has been in a steady decline. It is prevalent through many churches, not just Catholic, Protestant as well. Now, when we hold a pre-Cana conference here, in the opening remarks I give to the engaged couples, I cite comments by our bishop. He notes that in a study compiled in 2014, showing that in less than a decade's time, the numbers of couples in, in the age group of 21 through 34 coming to be wed totally flip-flopped, reversed. More couples are choosing not to marry than to do so. Now, aside from a host of sociological reasons, he proposed that it was a fear of commitment and a lack of understanding of the meaning of self-giving love. And that love is increasingly regarded as just a mere feeling. Now, at about the same time, Pope Francis proposed just another perspective, that married eligible people were becoming fearful of forever. 
Imagine that. But loving one person for life, while desirable, seems impossible. Well, I conclude my presentation in the pre candidates opening remarks by pointing out to the couples that they've chosen the better part. They're there. They're going to be wed. Further, I assure them that the other team couples for the pre-cana are fervently convinced that not only is a loving commitment to another for life as desirable, it is quite possible with the grace of God, and that's the rub. The role of the sacramental grace from holy matrimony, it enables the married couple to live out their vows and grow in holiness. To give oneself to another for life, come what may. And to be open to God's gift of life in begetting and raising children. Now, decades ago, Father John Carapi, I think maybe some of you have heard of him, stated that in conception, the universe is changed forever. Pretty profound words. For a new eternal being has come into existence. Is there any wonder why the church holds in such high regard both the sanctity of life and the sacrament of holy matrimony? Thus, we celebrate our anniversary couples because it celebrates God's graceful presence within their married lives. That gift makes them a gift to anyone in their lives. <coughs> now, I can't conclude today without adding some words from Father Mike Jenkins. Anyone here remember Father Mike Jenkins? I see a few. Well, Father Mike Jenkins was a burly, red-headed man. He was here with us in the 90s. And a couple things I re remember about him particularly was that he would stand out in the cold, sub-freezing temperatures, people leaving masks in his shirt sleeves. Didn't seem to be bothered by the cold. He also called himself the world's biggest leprechaun. I also remember with amusement that sometimes he, he could get on your father Morris's skin and not regret it. But that's what the, that was then. But in a homily, he once stated that it was part of the sacred duty of a married couple to get each other to heaven. I'd heard that before, but it was so impactful hearing it coming from the pulpit. He was recognizing that faith in God through the vocation of married life and love is an avenue for grace and salvation. Jesus saving power at work. And that is something I think far too many of us have forgotten or never, maybe never learned in the first place. Now, the additional words of Father Mike that day have been incorporated into the final action that my wife Diane and I do with each individual engaged couple we work with. First, we stack our hands together. It means if we have the couple put their hands together and then put each of their other hands on top of that, and then my wife and I, hands on top, and then hands on the bottom. Okay, now, I ask every married couple and engaged couple present to hold hands right now. Okay, are, are you holding hands? Right, so, and then we remind them <clears throat> that in the Jewish tradition, the wife is head of the household and the husband is the spiritual head of the household. I think that's worth remembering. But then we tell them that our prayer for them, and for every married and engaged couple present today, is that the same we have for ourselves. That at the end of a long life together, as we stand before the throne of God, we want to be able to tell him thank you. Thank you for this most wonderful and lovely person you blessed our lives with.
I believe in one, one God, God, the Father, Father the Almighty, Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, earth and of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only, the only begotten, begotten Son, Son of God, God born of the Father before all ages, ages. God from God, God light from light, from light true, true God from true God, true God. begotten, God not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all, all things, things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came, he came down, down from heaven, heaven, and by the Holy, Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance, and accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We bring all our petitions before our Heavenly Father. That the church on earth may continue to heal broken lives in the power of the Holy Spirit, let us pray to the Lord. <coughs> that the love of God should prevail in conflicts throughout the world, bringing about a just and lasting peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. Through the intercession of Our Lady of the Rosary, may our nation become more truly a nation under God with increased respect for life, marriage and God's plan, and religious liberty. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. That renewed in the Holy Spirit, all members of our parish family may yearn to hear Jesus' words, your faith has saved you. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. That all married couples be greatly blessed by Christ, <coughs> enabling the church families, the, the domestic church, to be families to flourish in grace and holiness. <coughs> Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who long to be delivered from illness and pain will be comforted through the efforts of their caregivers and the outreach of this Christian community. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear <coughs> our prayer. That those who have died with Christ may live and reign with him especially Norma Schwager, as well as James Chapman, Bob Berg, David McCameron, Sarah Ann Collier, David Cito, and Lawrence Welly. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. <coughs> Heavenly Father, we ask you to hear and answer all our petitions for their offered to your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord, may the Lord accept, accept the sacrifice at your hands for the price and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. O Lord, accept the prayers of your faithful with the sacrificial offerings, so that through these acts of devotedness we may pass over to the glory of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your, your spirit. spirit. Lift up your hearts. So we lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is right, right and, and just. just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed us in your own image and set us over the whole world in all its wonders to rule in your name over all you have made, and forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. With all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. O Lord, you are holy indeed, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. This is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chops. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. <clears throat> when we Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. <coughs> Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Thomas, John, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy in us all that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, 
Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. for the coming of the kingdom as our Savior taught us. Our Father, Father who, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Grant peace in our days. By the help of your mercy, may we be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with with your spirit, spirit. let us offer each other the sign of peace. For those who cannot now receive Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament, we offer the following prayer. My Jesus, I believe that Thou art present in the Blessed Sacrament. I love Thee above all things, and I desire Thee in my soul. Since I cannot now receive Thee sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though Thou wert already there, I embrace Thee and unite myself wholly to Thee. Permit me not that I should ever be separated from thee. Amen. Yeah. 
Let us pray. O Lord, we entreat your majesty most humbly, so that as you feed us with the nourishment which comes from the most holy body and blood of your Son, you may make us sharers of his divine nature, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> Please be seated. Thank you, Father. Hi, everyone. My name is Ali Paolo, and you probably see me around. I run the young adults group that's here at church, as well as I'm here to speak on behalf of a Beacon of Light or the ABL Pregnancy Center. And we're celebrating four years since opening in Maryville, Illinois. ABL is a Catholic, life-affirming, life-giving, and life-changing center for families facing unplanned pregnancies. As October is Respect Life Month, I just wanted to give you a quick update on ABL, what we do and why we do it. First of all, we are pleased to welcome Christy Hoffenberg as our new executive director. You may be familiar with Christy's work in the pro-life field. We count her among the many blessings we've received 
and look forward to seeing where she leads us. ABL is truly pro-life, pro-life for unborn babies, and pro-life for expectant mothers, fathers, and families. We provide free and confidential pregnancy tests and ultrasounds. We offer counseling for mothers and fathers facing unplanned pregnancies, as well as post-abortion counseling. We give referrals to life-affirming physicians and adoption options. We educate new mothers about pregnancy, parenting, relationships, and faith. Our services don't stop after the birth of the baby either. Building a relationship with our families is an integral part of setting them up for success. Counseling and education programs and mater maternal support continue through the toddler years. ABL is changing the culture surrounding unplanned pregnancies by providing a new outlook for expectant mothers who at a time of perceiving hopelessness find support, friendships, vacation, and faith in our little center. As for why ABL is made up of volunteers and community supporters, including St. Peter and Paul Parish, who have the courage to see a world where new life, whether planned or not, is welcomed with a celebration that the baby and family deserve. It's not just a matter of second chances, but an inspiring understanding of God's will when human life is created. Each and every person who visits our center is welcomed and loved unconditionally. As Jesus welcomes the lo and loves each one of us, ABL is a support system for women who sometimes don't have anyone else. Our simple formula of love and support has trans translated to success story after success story. In just four years at the center, we have helped over 250 clients. Most of those clients have participated in our Earn While You Learn program, where they each where they have learned hundreds of packages of diapers, filled diaper bags, countless articles of clothing, formula, baby food, and other necessities. Clients have taken over 60 courses already this year, courses that help them be better parents, smarter consumers, healthier families, and more faithful Christians. Thanks to so many volunteers, our surrounding, par our surrounding parishes and Catholic schools, the Knights of Columbus, and community support, ABL will continue creating success stories and changing the culture. We need, our, we need your involvement. We rely on your loving community, our volunteers, donations, and prayers in order to continue our mission. Please fill out contact cards, which I will have in the gathering space. And please, um, we'll add you to our newsletter mailing list and keep you up to date on our needs and success. John Bopp will be our speaker at our annual gala fundraiser coming up on October 22nd, and we'd love to, for you to join us. It will be a great way to meet our new executive director, Chrissy Hoffer. Tickets and sponsors will be available through the end of this week. Whether you want to donate, volunteer, stay informed, or attend the gala, please see me after Mass, and thanks again for your prayers. <clears throat> and in recognition of Infant and Pregnancy Loss Awareness Month, our annual memorial display will be set up next weekend around the baptismal font. And if you would like to include the name of a child lost in infancy or pregnancy in the memorial, please email Kelly Gaither this week. And finally, join us on Friday, October 21st for Trunk or Treat. We are looking for families to decorate their cars and pass out candy for this family-friendly community event. Please see the bulletin or contact Kelly Gaither for more information. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks be to God. Be to God.